Hello everyone and welcome along to the Jumps Racing podcast here. Just before uh, anything, we'd just like to say we hope you had a great Christmas. I wish you all a very happy new year as well. There's so much to look back on, uh, plus uh, the action on Saturday is what we are going to be looking ahead to as well. As always, hosted by myself, Bobby Beavers, Nick Seddon joins me. Nick, I uh, hope you had a great Christmas and happy new year to you as well. Hello. Hi, Bobby. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to everyone. Listen, so much to talk about, isn't there? You know, we were we were wondering about when we were going to do an episode, whether we, we skip this week and come back next week. But I'm glad we're right back into the groove on the 2nd of January. Um, gives everyone something to listen to. And mm-hmm. there's just so much to look back on that it would be a shame not to almost devote the majority of an episode to it. So yeah, it gets its moment because, well, we could be here all night, couldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, we were saying, weren't we, uh, earlier on today, you know, that this podcast potentially uh, could, could be three hours uh, long. Um, it's not going to be three hours, just, just to emphasise. We think we could do it in about half an hour uh, or so. And obviously for our producer, Seb, you know, if it, if it was a three-hour podcast, it'd be a lot of editing for him from his end as well. He'd be furious, wouldn't he? He would be furious. <laughs> uh, right, I'll tell you what, let's go uh, straight into it then. In fact, just before we do, j- just to let the, uh, the viewers and the listeners know also, uh, you can watch us on YouTube if you want to watch us in vision. And don't forget as well, <laughs> I've just seen that WhatsApp, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, don't forget as, as well, uh, you can listen to uh, the audio on Apple Music and SoundCloud as well. So it's uh, just uh, making me laugh. And I'll tell you. WhatsApp group uh, we've uh, we've got going there. Uh, right then, Nick. Uh, first of all, looking back, then we'll we'll discuss uh, what we saw at Kempton and particularly the the King George. Uh, Clan Desobo has has won the race for a, a second consecutive year. You know there was a big talking point, wasn't there? Has Harry Cobden make the right choice? You know, is he right to ride surname? Does he stick with Clander Zobo? He, he did choose surname, but but Clander Zobo under Sam Twister Davis has uh, got the job done. And I think we've mentioned before that maybe he's the uh, the forgotten horse to an extent. Not the case anymore. Not the case, no. And um, it's a nice angle, that, Bobby, because I think it's the forgotten horse ridden by the forgotten man as well. So good to see Sam Twiston Davis get a, a grade one winner. Um, you know, I think he, he's had a, a year or so in the darkness, you know, on, on notable Saturdays. He's been riding at more low key meetings. Um, mm. So it, it's really good to see him to see him pick up such a, a notable win here. And it was a great ride. Um, yeah. it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because um, it's a race that told us a lot, but it probably didn't tell us that much in terms of the Gold Cup picture because no. we we have a winner here in Clander Zobo who clearly goes really well at Kempton, has won by 21 lengths, beating his stable mm. mate in the process. But there's still that lingering doubt over him about whether the the real stamina test of a Gold Cup, three miles, two furlongs, is for him um, because he was fifth last year. He was a solid fifth, but you know we came out thinking, well, is he a Gold Cup horse? And then he went to Aintree and he was beaten there by Kenboy. So mm-hmm. the question still remains with him. And then as for the, the other three finishers, well, you know, I don't know what you think, Bobby, but they just, I don't think they, they stayed the three mile trip really. Um, there's no shame in that. I mean, the experiment failed with surname. He'll go back to the, the two and a half mile division. Imagine he'll go to the Ascot chase next for a mouthwatering matchup with waiting patiently, probably the same for race. So um, yep. foot pads probably now all systems go for the Ryanair. Um, the real disappointment was, was lost in translation. Um, you know, we made no secret of it that I thought he was a triple crown horse. Um, mm. Just didn't really seem to go a yard. Um, it's interesting that Colin Tizard and Joe Tizard have both come out and said they think it could be a win problem. Um, hopefully they, they sort him out. He, he just he just didn't seem to be at it, did he? Um, it sounds like it's the Denman chase next for him. But I mean, I wrote on the website today in the road to Cheltenham, Colin, that I think the market has reacted quite harshly. I think this... Once again, this division is wide, wide open. We'll talk about the Savills next, and we can touch an Albion photo as well, if you like. Um, you know, it's five to one Albion photo at the moment, but, you know, he's as big as nine to one in places at the time recording lost in translation. If you sort of take that as a blip um, and go back <laughs> to the form of his Betfair Chase success, bearing in mind that we know he'll stay the trip, bearing in mind that he's got really good form at Cheltenham, and, you know, that he goes right, it, goes, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. 
Um, I, th- I think it's a big price, and at the t- at the moment, I, I still see him as a, a really serious Gold Cup contender. You know, just in regards to Clander's elbow, just one for you here, mm. Nick. Would you potentially uh, bypass Cheltenham and go straight for the bowl? It, it's Second certainly the last year. Yeah, I I I, I think there is genuine um, reason to think that. Um, I also think I wouldn't be scared of chucking him in the in the Ryanair either. Okay. Over two and a half miles, give him an aggressive ride. You know, they know that he, you know, he'll stay further. I think that's an option as well. Um, it, it could all come down to the politics of the Nichols lad in that, you know, they won't want to put surname and Clanders over in for the same race if they can avoid it and things like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, maybe so. You know, not all horses go to what go well at Cheltenham. You know, um, surname might might miss the festival entirely. He's another one. Bristol to my, he might miss the festival. Um, mm-hmm. Some horses just don't go at Cheltenham, so th- there is a there is a serious case. But I suppose with the with the division being so open, with every division being so open, mm. you've got to be tempted. Um, you know, you. It's been a while since I've known a festival. I don't know what you think, but just every division just seems really, really open this year. And it's great to see. Uh, mm. I, I, mm. I think mm. it's good that we've 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 got that competition, not necessarily from a punting perspective. Let's say, uh, let's be honest. But I, I I think the fact that there is that healthy competition out there, I I, I think for me. It's it's only a huge positive, and, and and I like the fact that you know that there is the, the the competition there. There's you know will that horse go for this race? Will that horse yeah. go for this race? You mentioned lost in translation being as big as nine to one with with some firms because of what happened uh, in in the King George. Oh, he could bounce back, and if he performs uh, like it at Haydock, I beg your pardon, but also like you said at Carlisle as well. Which I know it was only listed race, but it was it was mightily impressive that day. You know, it, I think nine to one is he going to be a crack in each way? But if he's on song for that day, does he go on and win the race itself? You know, so, so I, I, I personally uh, like the fact uh, that they're open and and, and you have yeah. got that that that, that competition. I, I think it's great uh, for it, and and that brings me on to the to the Savills chasers as well, Nick, because we mentioned about. Will that horse go for this race or go for this race? Uh, Delta Work, that was uh, victorious uh, in, in the Savills Chase. He's currently got two entries for Cheltenham. Does he go for the Ryanair or does he go for the Gold Cup? Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? Um, personally, I think he's got to go for the Gold Cup. Uh, he, was a, he was an excellent staying chaser last year. I mean, the only blot on his copy, and it wasn't really a blot, to be honest, was when he no. was third at Cheltenham in, in the uh, it was the RSA Chase, wasn't it? Um and, you know, forgiving the, the reappearance run, which he clearly needed at, at Dan Royal, he's bounced right to the top level of this division now. Um, I'm not convinced about this form of the Savills chase. I think, um, personally, anyway, watching the race, it was a thrilling finish, brilliant race. Mm. Um, I got the feeling that the best horses in the race might be in fourth and fifth in okay. Kemboy and presenting Percy. I, I was really impressed with Kemboy. Uh, he was so good last year. Mm-hmm. Um, probably needed the run, I think. Uh, you know, it's been a difficult situation for Willie Mullins to deal with, you know, with the ownership stuff and him mm-hmm. not being allowed to, to ride. It's not ideal, but he's back now and um, you'd imagine he'll come on for that. And presenting Percy as well, it's good to see him sort of running regularly because last year just never got going for him. Um, there was one excuse after another. He was put away here and there. Um, and... He gave me the the real feeling like he's building up to something presenting Percy. We know he's a good horse and, you know, that that reputation from his novice season has never left him. Um, this could be the this this could be the year that we see something serious from presenting Percy. There's a reason why he was sent off as favourite mm. for the Gold Cup last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm always tentative when the likes of, uh, and he is a smashing chaser, but Monolly being such a close head in second to Delta work because um, he is a very, he was a very good novice and he, I think he's a grade one winning novice. I saw him at Leopardstown um, in the Dublin festival, but mm-hmm. he's just fallen short of the top level on a few occasions now. So I'd be disappointed if, you know, he was, he was right at the top of the division. I think he's a, a plucky outsider, but I think you might find that um, if these five ran again, there'd be a wildly different result. Yeah, uh, and I probably uh, agree with that as, as well. Now, uh, down at Chepstow in Wales, we did have the uh, the Welsh Grand National, and, and it went in the way 
of Potter's Corner. You know, a Welsh win uh, in the Welsh uh, National. Absolutely fantastic for connections. You know, trainer Christian Williams, uh, I've interviewed him numerous times. He's one of the nicest people you could ever wish to meet. Uh, fantastic for Christian. He's recorded his biggest ever winner as a trainer. And also, uh, a day at the race is that young Jack Tudor. Uh, won't forget in a while either. Just a great story, wasn't it? Um, it's good when these things come together and, you know, um, he's a really likeable horse as well, Potter's Corner. He's, he's, this is this just appealed as, this was right, this is proper his game, wasn't it? Yeah. And, you know, we said, I think, before before Christmas that he felt, it felt like he was being rather cannily campaigned as well. Yeah. He had a couple of runs over hurdles that he never really, never really went a yard in and then all of a sudden he, he won over three miles at Chepstow and he thought, oh, hang on. <laughs> a bit of a plot going on here. He turns up a one four five and runs like that. You know, stamina is in his abundance, and that's his second national um, this year because he won the Midlands mm. as well back in, did, back in March. Um, whether he's, you know, I, I imagine he, he won the Welsh of one four five. I haven't had a look at his revised mark. I'll try and have a look now while I'm warbling on to you. Whether I imagine he'll go into the one fifties for this. Whether he's good enough. You know, a bit like Lakeview Lad, um, it's a big old ass to go to the Grand National in the 150s um, mm. the, in this day and age. But I imagine. I, that's, I think it's very ground dependent, though, isn't it? You know, he mm. needs that, that, that heavy ground, you know. Yeah, it, it, it was definitely. heavy in the Midlands National, heavy uh, at Chepstow, and you're not going to get heavy ground at Aintree, are you? Well, you wouldn't think so. No, um, he's going to go up to one. He's gone up to one five two, so he's up seven yeah. pounds. So he, he, he'll get a run in the national uh, if he wants yeah. one. Um, I suppose he's a bit like Ele- elegant escape, who we can chat about in a moment. You know, the wetter the better. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, really, really game winner. Uh, I thought there was a lot to take out of the race. You know, your favourite horse, Yala Enki, ran a crack third. third. Yeah, he ran a really good race. Uh, you know, a, a good ride from Bryony Frost. I was really impressed with his stable mate in second, Trucker's Lodge. Yes. Um, considering that he's still a novice, I think that was just his fourth start over fences. Um, you know, he took to the discipline really well. He's clearly got stamina in abundance. He's gone up three pounds, so he's now off one four two. There's definitely a big staying chase in here. Maybe something like the Ida, maybe even the National. Um, mm. We won't be seeing the last of him. Elegant escape, you know. I I, I like him more by the run. Um, you know, he really is a bottom topper in that. I don't think he'll ever be a gold cup horse. Um, he'll always run his race, though. Um, the Grand National is going to be a big old gas for him, as it would be Native River, his stable mate. Mm. But it's hard not to like him. Um, and yeah, just a just a cork of a race, really, and a really good finish. And um, as the Trishal as you'd expect a Welsh National to be, really. The big race on Boxing Day at Weatherby was uh, the Grade Three uh, Roll American. It went in the way of a top veal bow. Now, we, we're going to hear from, from Phil Kirby uh, very, very shortly, but that was a, a very in, impressive performance by him. It certainly was, yeah. Um, now, perhaps unfairly, I, I sort of boxed him off as a horse that just didn't quite get three miles on the back of that rehearsal chase run. Yeah. And also bearing in mind the Charlie Hall as well. And I think what, what you'll hear Phil say as well is the key to this lad is, is getting him to settle. You know, he's very exuberant in the way he runs, but... You know, as he says, he he settles for at least half the race, and that was a, a big step forward. So maybe if they if they can change the way he approaches his races, he does have the stamina. Um, and yeah, this was a really really likable performance. Um, you know, he looked like a proper top level animal, which is what they were hoping. I think. Um, you know, he's a really nice bloke, Phil Kirby. And it's it's nice to see him have good horses. It really is. It was a great festive period for Phil Kirby. We'll talk about that very shortly. But first off, though, Nick caught up with Phil after Topville Ben's victory in the Roland Merrick. Phil, terrific performance there from Topville Ben. You must be delighted. Absolutely. I was, to be honest, I was more delighted he settled for circuit rather than you know winning's brilliant. But Plan A today was to try and t- turn him into a different horse and make him into a, a horse that can run in these good races. And settling for circuit is big, big progress. So. Um, he'll be he's a nice horse and he's improving all the time so it's great another win at Weatherby what is it about this track these seems to like so much it's local to us my owners like coming and I like coming as well so it's, it works well um, there's I think because there's a vast like a bit of a 
diversity of good races and bad races suits all my horses. So. And uh, is Grand National the end? It's a possibility. It's not, it's not the be-all and end-all this year, but it's something where we were thinking about a while ago, such as that might cost us winning something like that. So, Cheers, that um, But he's a, he will, I think he's that tight. Whether it's this year or not, we'll decide. But. This race should just a good pointer, though, for, for a race like the National. This is, he's a lovely horse, and he's going the right way, so... Great for Nick to catch up with Phil Kirby there at Weatherby after Topville Ben won the feature. And it was a, a great few days of festive period for Phil because he won the big race of the day at Doncaster as well. That was on the 29th. The uh, listed race, uh, Yorkshire Silver Vars, cracking finish to the race. But that's, you know, tough mare Lady Butters that could win over hurdles, you know, win over fences as well. Uh, got the job done. A fantastic finish with a happy diva for our very own Kerry Lee. And Le Bagel Wall was back in third. Yeah. Um, finish of the festive period. Pardon? The finish of the festive period. Oh, most definitely. Most, uh, most, most definitely. It's unbelievable, uh, wasn't it? Oh, ab- absolutely amazing. Cracking racing. Looking at what turned up as well. It's hard to believe. It's it's only a listed race as well. Mm. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, and, you know, Labago Raj, you know, she's a multiple grade one winner last year as a novice. Mm. And I must admit, I really thought that um, Happy Diva was going to win. I, I, I did not think that Lady Buttons was going to get past her. But she's such a game and genuine mare. Mm. Uh, all three of them are. And it, it served up a serious finish. And all three will carry on being really productive and it almost mm. it's almost a shame now that this mare's chase isn't coming in this year we're gonna to have to wait another year uh for it because what an advert it was for it um if they're all like that bring it on um yeah really really good race and a couple of mates actually went to went to doncaster who just go is like they're not uh, massive junkies like me and you bobby that that go every week to the races but they messaged me going like oh we're at doncaster today and i was just i've never been more jealous <laughs> and, uh, you know, I said to him, it could be a good race, this. And, boy, it, it paid off. And, um, yeah, hopefully it carries on in this vein. And, um, you know, the mayors carry on performance because they're, they're, it's really paying dividends, um, you know, investing into the, these mayors' races because they're, they're really good watches. Certainly was a, a cracking finish, as you already mentioned. Definitely the finish uh, of uh, the, the festive uh, period. Uh, anyway, a cracky finish there to the Yorkshire Silver Vars. Now, we've already heard from Phil Kirby. We're going to hear now from uh, Richard Hobson uh, because uh, Lord de Minnie has been having a, a great time of things of late. Richard, um, second valuable win in the space of 10 days for Lord de Minnie. He just keeps rolling, doesn't he? Yeah, no, fantastic, really. I mean, well, the plan wasn't to come here, as you gathered, but... Um, you know, you like to think whilst they're in good order, you keep going. And, uh, and he was in serious order after his Tommy Whittle win. And, um, you know, that's, that's why we brought him again, really. Now, I'm going to sound like a broken record here because you've been asked this a few times already. But mm. is there a certain Grand National now on the radar for him? Yeah, but I mean, obviously, it might be a year too early. Mm. Um, we can always... We can, you go for a drink. Yeah, definitely, yeah. We could always dream that, that um, he'll run the Grand National one day, but it might just be a year too early. And obviously, conditions is key for him as well. And in terms of the plan for the rest of the season, the idea was mentioned, but perhaps the Cheltenham Festival or something like yeah, that? Yeah, probably the four-miler. So you get an entry for Cheltenham and, and you know, you get entry in all, all the races. I mean, he's got stamina, clearly, hasn't he? Yeah. Obviously, he won over three-mile three, three mile four in horrible conditions today. So um, he needs a break now. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to freshen him up. I mean, he's been pretty busy. That's five runs in the last sort of two months. So we need to sort of respect that we've got a good horse now and, uh, and then go from there, really. Two wins on the trot now at Haydock, maybe even back here for the Grand National trot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, sure, sure, sure. Trial could be, could be an option, but we'll, let's see. It take one day at a time now yeah. because the plans are sort of all out the window now. And <laughs> we've got to reschedule, haven't we? And that was our second trainer joining us here on the Jumps Racing Podcast. Richard Hobson speaking to, to Nick there at Haydock. He's having a great time to things with Lord Mini at the moment, isn't he? He is. Yeah. It, it took a little while, I suppose, for him to get going. Is it? There's a brilliant story that. Um, I think it was in the mirror about how, you know, um, he had to find new owners for him. And, um, yeah, he's absolutely thriving now. You know, he picked mm. up that win at Newcastle in November. And then two two valuable races at Haydock in 10 days is no mean feat. It really isn't. Um, he won that off lot 137 at Haydock last time. So, you know, he's now eking into Grand National territory. I think it's also really interesting that he could go for the um, National Hunt chase. You know, he's going to be very, he'd be very um, experienced in there. That would be really mm-hmm. interesting. So, yeah, I think 
he's one to keep an eye on this year. He's an improving chaser, stamina in abundance. He's very much on the up. Um, they originally thought about the Ida. It sounds like, you know, he might he might be a bit good for the Ida now, you know. Mm. Um, the Ida is a, is a real race for sluggers. Um, with, that, with all the greatest respect to the Ida, it's a hell of a test. Um, it could be the Cheltenham Beckons. It certainly could uh, with uh, him. Right, then, just before we do look at the action over the weekend, I just want to get your thoughts and opinions about the, the two mile divisions at the moment in, in terms of the hurdle uh, and, and the chasing. They are relatively weak, aren't they? And, and there's no real real standout uh, at, at the moment. And, and I think, you know, with, with how wide open, you know, both divisions are for, for the two mile chasing scene, for the two mile uh, hurdle scene uh, as well, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if something unexpected. Uh, well, neither of those, uh, especially at the Cheltenham Festival. Definitely. I think um, it's a shame that we don't have Ed Quigley ready because surely he's licking his lips at all of these <laughs> wide open markets. There's got to be some anti-post uh, possibilities here for a man of his calibre. Um, but yeah, really wide open. I think it's, I think it sums up the two-mile chasing division, the champion chase, mm. in that we've got Defi de Soy, who I'm adamant is a two-and-a-half miler. <laughs> is now 72 second favourite for that, or four to one second favourite for the race. Behind Altior, who hasn't run over two miles yet this season. We haven't seen mm. him since the um, the race at Ascot, the, the Christie chase. Um, you know, and bubbles just seem to get burst left, right and centre, don't they? This Shaq and Poissois, we heard how well Danny Mullins, how highly mm. Danny Mullins thought of him before Christmas. And the bubble was burst with him, you know, just out out battled by a Plutar late on. So we've got to consider him now. Um, but I never considered him to be a bona fide team either either. So yeah, really, really interesting. You know, you go further down, you know, 20 to one and so do we have to think about him in the, in the champion chase? Can, because it just does feel really open. Um, and I know you, you're about to put someone up Bobby that perhaps we don't think about being a two miler, but you know, um, he certainly showed he's very capable, didn't he? He certainly did. And uh, trained in the north as well, waiting patiently uh, for Ruth Jefferson, who ran an absolute cracker uh, in the Tingle Creek at Sandown, finishing third. Now, it's, it's worth noting with him that they've they've always uh, bypassed uh, Cheltenham. He's never actually run at Cheltenham either. But but I I just wonder uh, now, with it waiting patiently, is that if, if this time they're going to be thinking, right, now is the time for him to run the Cheltenham Festival. If it, if it was up to me, I personally would go for that champion chase. And I, and if he did, I, I think, in my opinion, it would be a leading contender. And to carry on, I suppose, the the thing of the two miles, what, what did you make of like the two mile division? Because we now have this mayor in Epitan who is the three to one favourite. It, this feels even more wide open, really. Bubbles get burst every week. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly do. Eh? I'm, I'm actually seeing three to one at a hundred to, to thirty. Look, it's 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 an interesting one, and I think there's going to be a lot more uh, happening between now and then, where maybe the picture may become a, a little bit clearer uh, than what we've already got at the moment. But you know, Nicky Henderson, he, he knows how to win a a, a champion hurdle. You mentioned there about about the Christmas uh, uh, hurdle as well. He's won it for the past three years with, with three different horses. And going back even further, the, the likes of, of Binocular. So no surprise to see this one at the top end uh, of the market. Three to one uh, favourite at, at the time of uh, recording. But I, I personally think, Nick, there's going to be a lot more twists and turns uh, along the way before we head to Cheltenham in March. Agree with you. Um, you know, I... It's really, you know, we're going to chat about um, Warren a bit later on, but, you know, we've it's it feels like it's one of those. If you've got a good novice, it might be worth chucking them in. Uh, you yeah. know, I look down the list, um, I think that Soldier is, is a is a really, a really good animal at the moment compared to what we've seen so far. And, mm-hmm. you know, the one who keeps catching my eye, and I, I've sort of got a, I've got a bit of a soft spot for a rogue. And I remember him yeah. being really... Um, fractious in uh, over at Leperstown a couple of years ago when I saw him in the novice chase he was behind mm-hmm. footpad is uh, Petit Mouchoir now, okay he's a bit difficult to catch right but you know he's had a bit a couple of years of not really knowing his niche he's back in the two mile hurling division now and he's run two really good races last twice yeah. the place in these grade one contests he's 40 to one for the champion hurdle um 
if he carries on running in the same vein, it, it'd be a great each way fancy, definitely. Um, and what but, price is that? So forty to one, about forty to one. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, it, it's the sort of year where I think you're entitled to have a look at some of the bigger price runners. Um, you know, we had one like it was Silver Street, wasn't it? Sixty six to one. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. plays for Evan Williams, so you know. Um, I think in, in this is the sort of year for your for your big price punters. Um, it, it could be really interesting, but yeah, I, for me anyway, um, I wouldn't be going anywhere near the three to one or Epitanza. I, I I think it's a wheat renewal when she's favourite, and with all due respect, I, I really do. That's what I want to hear. And great for the people watching and listening now. A forty to one. Uh, each way for the for the champion herd. All I will say to people uh, watching and listening now is that you heard it uh, here first. Rather, just before we do look at to, to Saturday into Sunday, a quick word on uh, Faheen. Faheen the machine. What a warrior this horse is! Unbelievable, isn't it? It's it's turning into the story of the season. This, um, you know, I'm going to sound like a broken record because we chat about him every week and. You know, we've already said, I, I thought it was game over for him, but he's come roaring back. And crikey, he had that match race against Sam Crow. Um, and not only did he win, he won by 10 lengths. Mm-hmm. And we now have a 12-year-old favourite. And it's not the JLT anymore. I've just checked. I was baffled earlier checking the, the anti-post markets. It's it's the Marsh Novices Chase. So clearly Marsh okay. is really getting involved now with sponsorship. They sponsored the Long Walk last month. Um, Faheen, 12-year-old Faheen is the seven to one favorite for what was known as a JLT. It is just bizarre, but he deserves it. And long may it continue. It's great to see him thriving. Yeah. And hopefully he can get the job done uh, again at the Cheltenham Festival. Right then, let's look ahead. Uh, Nick, two with the toll with at the time of recording. Fiddler on the roof uh, is the market leader at two to one for the Colin Tizard yard. Of course, he comes in space on that back of that course and distance win last time out. Yeah, th- I think it's worth starting on the angle that um, it's a bit hit and miss, I think, the Tolworth. Uh, I always think that the first couple of weeks of January are a bit whiffy when it comes mm. to excitement. You know, we're, we're all we're all hungover from Christmas. Uh, and this this is a grade one contest, but uh, only you might have seen the, the quiz question on our Twitter feed earlier um, from our social media maestro, but only two horses have won both the Tolworth and the Supreme in the same season this century. Mm-hmm. Um, the most recent, those being Somerville Boy a couple of years ago. But there are some decent horses on, on the roll of honour. You know, York Hill, the Rogue Lamy Surge, and Finian's Oscar are three recognisable names from the last few years. And yeah, it, it, it will be an interesting race. Um, I think that this one, Fiddling the Roof, is the right favourite. His form's working out really well. Um, he chased home Time Hill on his debut at Chepstow a couple of months ago. And then... On his second start, he chased him another one, Edwardston, who's won again since. And then he dotted up at Sandown in a, in a minor race last time. Mm. Um, this is a lot tougher, but that form suggested he's a, he's a lot better than, you know, he, he keeps being franked. Um, so he's probably the right favourite here. And um, yeah, it is, it is interesting, but there's plenty in opposition to give him a race. This certainly is uh, indeed, Nick. And at the time of recording, nine to four uh, joint second favourites for hanging there of Emma Lavelle and Son of Camus as well for, for, for Nicky Henderson. Now, both these horses have won their previous two, so both of these going for the hat-trick. Indeed. Um, we'll start with the latter one, the Henderson horse, um, Son of Camus. Now, I get the feeling that this one's probably where he is in the market on reputation more than what he's been able to show so far because of who he represents. But, you know, he's two from two this season. He's a €68,000 purchase. Um, and, you know... Yeah. It's one of those that with these novices, they they get the opportunity to step mm. into grade one company. The vibes around him in the market are strong. So I, I'd expect a big race. And then it's it's nice to see Hang in there as well for the Emma Lavelle team. She's having a terrific season so far. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a little bit more experienced than the two around him in the market. Made four starts over hurdles so far and won the Supreme trial last time at Cheltenham. Um it's form that's a, it's okay form. The the horse in third that day has since run pretty well at Kempton. Um, probably needs to find a little bit more, but yeah, an intriguing and probably a second, a justified second favourite. Uh, Silver Hallmark comes into the race on the back of a win last time out at Chepstow. I, th- I think what we need to mention 
is that the, the Fergalo Brian Yard are absolutely flying, having a, tr- a tremendous season. And I, I spoke to, to, to Fergal about this and, and Sally as well. And they both said that ever since they've moved yards is when the winners just keep coming and coming and coming. Now, don't get me wrong, he, he normally has a great season anyway. He, he does train uh, numerous winners. But since they've moved yards, everything's just clicked into place even more so than before. Just kind of stop training the winners. No, he's having a wonderful season, isn't he? The is he, he's got to be the biggest cake enthusiast in racing, hasn't oh, he? Oh, I love it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think there's a bit of a toss up uh, with this between uh, myself, uh, Fergal, and Rishi Passad as well. You know, because because people know me in the press room that I I, I do like my cake. You're a big uh, eater. I will. Oh, I will as soon this. as the cake comes to the press room, I, I am there. So is Rishi Passad as well, and I'm sure he won't mind me. Uh, saying that, and Fergal O'Brien, as you said, you know he he, he loves his uh, he loves his cake as well. I think me and Rishi should head down to Fergal's yard. and we should all eat cake together. What what do you think? And obviously you come along as well, Nick. Are you a uh, are you a ba- baking man though, or just 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 an eating man? I, I I cannot bake. I will just gladly scoff. So we can't have the great <laughs> racing bake off, no. Uh, no, no. I, I'd have I'd have to take my wife with me to help me because uh, my, my my wife's uh, really good at baking. Uh, really, really good. Oh, really? I, uh, yeah, she she's amazing. I am hopeless. I I would burn it. That's how bad I am. Well, we'll what we'll do is we'll get you um, a bottle of fake tan. We'll we'll okay. dye your hair grey, and then you can be the resident racing's Paul Hollywood. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah you, can, you can judge everyone's cakes. But um, yeah. back to the racing. Uh, you know this silver hallmark. <laughs> he's um, he's another well-bred try, well-bred type. He cost a bit of money. Um, and he's another one who gets his chance to shine here. One on debut, beat one called McFabulous from a powerful yard. I can't remember mm. if it's Henderson or Nichols. I think it might be Henderson. I'm going to mm. search it while I'm warbling. But yeah, gets the opportunity to step into the grade one level. It was Paul Nichols. Um, he again, McFabulous, flopped last time out. So it, it's form that isn't working out brilliantly, but it's winning form at Chepstow on soft. Um, I imagine it's going to be quite testing on Saturday at, at Sandown. Mm. So it should suit. And uh, yeah, it should be an informative race. Um, it's hurdling divisions. Some are stronger than others. Um, the Supreme still feels pretty open at the moment. So, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, Champ's the three to one favourite. I've just got the odds up. Um, you know, he's Champ in the Supreme Novices hurdle. No, that's on Ozchecker as well. Um, Abracadabra is the four to one favourite for the Supreme Novices Hurdle. Um, yeah, you get the feeling that if one wins this really well, it, the market could change radically. Champ, honestly, <laughs> Champ, Champ's quoted for the Supreme Novices. Uh, let's move on to uh, the uh, the veterans uh, handicap uh, chase as well, uh, which is run after the toll. So I want to just mention this as well. It's in memory of uh, Hoblon, uh, Hoblon de Zobo. Uh, which is great to see them. You know, Hobo and Zobo was a, a fantastic horse, and, and it's great to see that they're honouring his memory uh, in terms of, of, of the veterans' chase. And I do believe that you like Burton's well in this. Yeah, um, I suppose if a note on Hobo and Zobo, uh, it was, you know, desperately sad. Mm. Last month, he, he went he went out on it, you know, doing what he loves, and he? he was a real stout veteran. I think he's one of the most popular chases in training. Uh, and it's a really fitting tribute. And it was reported in the Racing Post today that Venetia Williams is really going to try and win this in his honour. And she's got one in Burton's well. And I think I think they could be onto something. Um, mm-hmm. I think I spoke about this one all the way back in October after the old Rome chase. He won on that day at Aintree. Um, and he's a very frail and fragile type. He hadn't been seen on the track for 664 days before Aintree. And he absolutely dotted up. Uh, he was on one three three in Mark, which is a, a pretty lenient one. Um, and he was one that always shaped as a talented type, but just a, a frail, fragile sort. And uh, he's since run at Haydock um, and and never never went a yard. Um, so he, he lines up here off a, a mark of one three eight. Um, mm. I think he's a type that can bounce back. I think I think it he could well have. You know, we we talk about the bounce factor when. When a horse runs really well after coming back from an absence, they don't always follow it up, especially if they turned out pretty quickly. Um, I think he'll bounce back from that one. Um, his mark of 138. Now, he's carrying colours, which are of a certain Trevor Hemmings. Um, <laughs> and on a mark of 138, um, it's becoming more and more popular for these 
veterans races to be a good gateway to Aintree for the Grand National. Um, if he wins this well, you mm-hmm. wouldn't put it past him getting a seven pound rise for the handicapper. And if you get to a mark of about one four five, you're in vintage Clouds territory. You'll probably sneak in the Grand National. So I wouldn't put it past us seeing this one at Aintree in April. And just a quick word as well, Nick. Uh, the Grade One over at Nace on Sunday. There's one horse you're particularly keen on. Well, yeah, I think it. Um, you know, it's not a tip because he's seven to two on on violin. But um, you know, it's difficult not to like what he's done so far, is it? Um, mm. And you know, he hardened up in the markets for Cheltenham without even running over Christmas because he beat a horse called Abracadabra at the beginning of December. That one has since franked the form by winning in his own right over Christmas. And, you know, we were talking about how open the champion hurdle division is. He's 12 to one for the champion hurdle. Now I've seen a lot of people suggest it and, you know, I've seen stranger things happen. I don't think that's what Gordon Elliott will do. I must admit, but, um, certainly I think if he was chucked in the champion hurdle, he wouldn't be 12 to one on the day. Um, you know, when you've got a horse like Epitant at three to one in the market, he would be bang up there. Um, you know, if, for the rest of his options, it really is the world being his oyster because he's seven to four for the Ballymore, he's five to one for the Supreme, and 33s for the Albert Bartlett. He's a very versatile type. Um, he stays, but he's also shown plenty of speed at the same time. Um, it sounds, it looks to me like the Ballymore is going to be his bread and butter this year, but um, I don't think. The Lawler of Nace on Sunday will tell us too much. Um, he, I'll be shocked if he doesn't win. I know we, I know all we've talked. I've used the phrase "bubble burst" nineteen <laughs> times on this episode, but surely that one can't can't go. <laughs> you say that now, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, right then that is the end uh, of this uh, episode of the the jumps racing podcast as always don't forget that you can watch us on youtube uh, you can also listen to the audio on soundcloud and uh, not forgetting apple music as well but for myself bobby uh, alongside nick uh, wish you all a very happy new year again and we look forward to welcoming you back on next week's episode 